if the loop runs more than 100 times that sql query is executed more than 100 times dml statement is more than 150 statement which exceed our governor limits let's execute this one Hello everyone, in this video we will be learning about Gorner limits in Salesforce. We will cover what Gorner limits are, why they exist, the different type of Gorner limits and how to avoid or overcome them. First of all, we will understand what are Gorner limits. Gorner limits are like rules in a Salesforce that ensure no single user or app uses too much of the system shared resources such as memory, CPU time or database access. You might be wondering why these limits exist. As Salesforce uses a multi-tenant architecture which means that many different companies called tenants share the same underlying infrastructure and servers. To keep the system fast and fair for everyone, Salesforce enforces limit on how much processing each transaction can use. These are known as a Gorner limit. Gorner limits are enforced per transaction. Gorner limits apply per transaction that means each transaction is monitored and if it exceeds any limit it throws an error and the entire transaction is rolled back. So here, what is a transaction? So a transaction is in the Salesforce is a complete unit of work. It starts when a user or system trigger an action and end when all related logic finishes executing either successful or with a rollback. A single transaction may include many operations like SQL queries, DML statement, logic execution, callout, emails and many more. So let's focus on per transaction epic limit. First of all, we will see the number of SQL queries per transaction. Limit is 100 queries in synchronous code and 200 queries in asynchronous code. This means that you can execute up to 100 SQL select statements in a single synchronous transaction. Let's look at this example in the developer console. I have opened the execute anonymous window and now we have added the following SQL statement inside a for loop. Here, if the loop runs more than 100 times, that SQL query is executed more than 100 times. Since the Gorner limit is 100 SQL queries per transaction, so this will throw an error. Let's run. Here, it is throwing an error that system.limit exception too many SQL queries 101. So it means that we exceed the Gorner limits. No, if we change the loop to run exactly 100, here, this SQL query will execute 100 times. So it will not exceed our Gorner limits. Let's execute. You can see that there is no error. Let's look another example. Here we have two loops. The first loops run 40 times. So it means that our this SQL statement will execute 40 times and our another loop run more than 60 times. In total, you execute more than 100 SQL queries across the entire transaction. So even though no single loop hit the limit alone, the total SQL count exceed the limit and again you will get the system.limit exception. Let's run this one. And here you are getting error too many SQL queries. Let's look another limit which is on record retrieval. Records retrieved via SQL per transaction is 50,000 records. This limit refers to the number of records retrieved, not the number of SQL queries. Let's move to the developer console. And here, first query, let's assume it returns 40,000 records, and our another second query also returns 40,000 records. So in total, it's more than 50,000 records code so it will throw an error in our org we don't have any enough data but the logic remains the same let's move to the another limit which is on dml statement per transaction this is a number of individual like insert update delete statement you can run per transaction it's a max is 150 dml statements in per transaction it is not about the number of records it's about how many times you run or execute a dml statement in our example here we put a for loop and this for loop is executing 155 times of our code. So here we made a count record and here in each insert statement count as a one DML statement. So automatically our for loop is executing more than 150 times. So this insert DML statement is more than 150 statement which exceed our Gorner limits. Let's execute this one. So you can see that we getting an error too many DML statements 151. Is it because if this loop runs more than 150 times 
it results in more than 150 DML statement and you will get a Gorno limit error. Instead, we should use collection like list and perform DML outside the loop. We will look at this technique later. Let's move to another limit which is records processed via DML per transaction. This limit is 10,000 records. This is the maximum number of records you can insert, update, delete in a single transaction. So here you can see that we made a list and our for loop executing more than 10,000 and we are adding records in our account list and outside the for loop we are inserting our account data. One DML statement it's a more than 10,000 record right now so it will give error. So it exceeds the Gorner limit here. Let's execute. Here we need to remove this curly braces and let's execute again. You can see that too many DML rows 10,001. So it will exceed our Gorner limits. If we added, if we change our for loop and here it means that we are inserting records 10,000. So it is not exceeding our Gorner limits. So let's execute and here we didn't get any error. So even though it's just one DML statement, if the list contains over 10,000 records, the transaction will fail with the limit exception. Now let's look how to overcome Gorner limits in Salesforce. First of all, we need to bulky everything. Avoid placing SQL queries or DML statement inside loop. Instead of this, use collections like list, set and map to process records in a single batch operations. Like you can make a list after that inside a for loop, you can add uh, your uh, records in that list and outside the for loop, you can perform a DML operation with that list. Second is that we can optimize queries like use relationship queries parent to child or child to parent to retrieve related data efficiently. Apply filters like where close and put limits in the query. Another is the Apex CPU time limit exceeded. Salesforce CPU time limits uses to 10 seconds for synchronous transaction and 60 seconds for asynchronous processing. So here how to resolve CPU time out error in a Salesforce. Like you can write one trigger per object, avoid using process builder, use one flow per object and per event, avoid nested for loop and stop recursion in Apex. So you can you also use asynchronous Apex which runs in a separate transaction which means it has its own independent Gorner limits like 200 SQL queries, 10,000 DML rows. So asynchronous Apex is ideal for handling long running, resource heavy or background operations that should not block the user actions. In this we have a future methods, queuable Apex, batch Apex, scheduled Apex, Apex REST callout. So that's all in this video. Thank you.